electricity and ohms law no so when you say basic electricity and ohms law we will be discussing no the ano the basic concepts on electricity as well as um the different quantities electrical quantities the ano the the atomic theory or the structure of atom and how atom pertains to the the you know the the concept or the phenomenon called electricity and also the you know the very uh, fundamental law no on electricity which is ohm's law okay so let's start with our first slide so we begin with the units no so the units that, uh, that is used and adapted by the philippine electrical code and also according to ra 720 is the SI unit, no? So, this is the standardized metric unit, no? So, um, the SI unit are based on the MKSA. So, we'll say MKSA, this one, no? So, that is meter, kilogram, second, and ampere, no? So, they have been adapted uh, uh, as the unit, no? By the standardization bodies of the world, including the International Electrotechnical Commission, the IEC, which is uh, usually yan yung nakikita natin na, ano, na logo when we are going to uh, yung mga breaker natin is galing sa Europe or sa Japan. Then the American National Standards Institute, ANSI, no? so this is an um, American-based na, ano, na uh, standard body. Although, Sa US, ang ginagamit pa din nila is they are still using the English system, yung feet, inches, kanon, no? But they are also adapting the SI unit, no? And the standard board of the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineering or the IEEE. So the IEEE is usually the the ano, the uh, the standard body for electrical engineering, electrics engineering na nag ano na naglalabas ng iba't ibang publication, no? which is also part of the or one of the reference no ng ating Philippine Electrical Code okay so because we are using SI so we have also the SI decimal prefixes no so the SI decimal prefixes or or these prefixes are of the power of 10 no? so meaning yung ating ano yung ating uh, base na number kunyari 1 so, kapag ginamitan nila ng prefix, so it will be multiplied by 10 raised to the power or yung exponent niya depending on the uh, the prefix itself or the value of the prefix. For example, dito tayo sa uh, sa malalaki na prefix. No? So, you have exa, peta, tera, giga, miga, kilo, hecto, and deca. No? So, for exa, that is 10 to the power of 18. So, meaning the base number times 10 to the power of 18 kunyari ano 1 meter no so 1 meter if we are going to have that one as 1 hexameter so 1 times 10 to the power of 18 meters no so yan yung ibig sabihin ng prefix then kunyari um giga no so pinakausap natin is gigabyte no yung sa amount of data natin sa internet so ibig sabihin ng giga that is 1 gigabyte so that is 1 times 10 to the power of 9 bytes no yan so ibig sabihin ng 10 to the power of 9 so yung ano yung 1 um da ano wala lang ah, 1 tapos ah, followed by 9 zeros no so kaya ito 18. So, 1 followed by 18 zeros. So, yan yung ibig sabihin ng prefixes. No? Dito sa mga ano, sa mga prefixes na mga malalaki. When it comes to prefixes na nag-negative yung exponent, so, these are for smaller value. So, we said DC, centi, milli, micro, nano, pico, femto, and ato. For example, centi. No? 1 centimeter. No? So, that is 1 times 10 to the power of negative 2 meters. Kunyari, 1 millimeter. So, that is 1 times 10 to the power of negative 3 meters. So, ibig sabihin yan, so, you have uh, yung ano, yung 1 millimeter that is 0 followed by a 0 point tapos followed by 2 zeros saka muna yung 1. So, that is 0 0.001. So, that is 
uh, 1 millimeter equivalent to meters. No? So, 0 0.001 meter. So, yung sa ating kadalasan ginagamit is yung sa ating mga ano, mga USB, no? micro USB, ito din yung nanotechnology, ganyan. So, yan yung mga ginagamit natin ng mga prefixes. So, the usual na ginagamit na prefix when it comes to ano, so, when, when it comes to solving are first is itong centi, no? Then the milli, then the micro. Pag dito naman, so yung kilo, mega, uh, yung giga, yung ito, tatlo. Yung kadalasan ginagamit when it comes to calculations dito sa ano, sa basic electricity and ohms law, no? Okay, so yung kilo that is 1000, yung mega to the power of 6 that is 1 million, yung giga that is 1 billion, no? Okay? Then we have electricity. So electricity is the flow the flow of electrical power or charge. No? So it is essentially part of the modern life and important to the economy of course, no? So lahat ngayon is powered by electricity, no? So the economy or the or our daily life no Hin, wala siyang ano walang tawagan ay walang um, progress no if there is no electricity no so people use electricity for lighting heating cooling refrigeration and for operating appliances computers electronic machineries and public transportation system yun lahat-lahat na no are powered by electricity no kahit nga sa pagluluto no cooking no dito hindi nakalagay yung cooking yata no Cooking also is can be done no using electricity kasi may mga electric stove, electric oven, yon no. Okay, so the first principle of electricity is the polarity, so the negative and positive polarity. Okay, so polarity is a term used in electricity, magnetism, electricity, and just to name a few areas. So basically, polarity is just um the side no or the pole of magnets no so we have the negative and the positive polarity sa sa magnetism that is north and south pole so when we say negative polarity it is defined as the pole having the most electrons no so yung terminal na may malaming electrons no tawag diyan is negative pole or negative polarity the positive polarity is assigned to the pole with the fewest electrons Okay, then electrons move from negative to positive pole when the two poles are linked by a wire. So when that happens, we will now have the flow of electricity which, which we called as current. So yung flow ng ating electricity is from negative, okay, so from negative to positive. Yan. So, yan yung flow niya. No? Hindi siya from positive to negative. So, we call this one as the electron flow. But, as we go on with our discussion, no? when, we, when we go to DC circuits, DC and AC circuits, no? so, ang pag-analyze ng circuit, the flow of current is assumed to be positive to negative. No? Baliktad. So, that, so, that is what we called as conventional flow. Ito, the real flow of current or the real flow of electricity is from negative to positive kasi yung ating electrons is negatively charged so they will go from their their ano their terminal which is negative papunta sa positive because uh, um unlike poles or unlike polarity attract each other no so kaya yung flow ng ating electrons is from negative to positive Okay, so electrons, that is, like I said earlier, mayroon siyang negative electrical charge. So, yung mass ng electrons is 9.01 times 10 to power negative 31 kilograms. So, sobrang ano, sobrang uh, baba ng kanyang, ano, ng kanyang mass. No? So, the mass of electrons is about 1,836 times less than the mass of a proton. Yan. So, ang ano nito, the electrons is negative charge. No? So, there's no way that an electron could be changed from negative to positive. No? So, the charge of electron is always negative. Then, we have protons. No? So, protons is a particle having a positive... Let me forward. Yan. So, 
a you know a electron having a positive charge no yung, yung charge is positive okay then its mass is 1836 times greater compared to an electrons or approximately equal to 1.6726 to 192 times the power 27 10 times to the power of negative 27 kilograms so it, it doesn't mean na kailangan niyo tong ano i i I memorize no so ito yung mas mahalaga no the comparison between the mass of your electron and your proton okay so the charge of an electron or a proton is equals to 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative so ito exponent to the power of negative 19 columns so protons and neutrons are found in the atoms nucleus which why they are called nucleons so itong neutron so, ito yung no charge, no? So, it, it is a particle having no charge. So, yan yung neutron. Okay, so this is the structure of an atom. So, we have our electron. No? It is orbiting around our nucleus. Kung saan doon makikita yung ating proton. So, positive charge. And our neutron which is ano, uh, walang charge. So, ang tawag ng kanyang ano, ang tawag sa pat, no? O sa daan na tinatahak ng ating electron is what we called as electron orbit. Yan. Okay. So, the charge of an electron and that of a proton are equal in magnitude but opposite in polarity. So, yun yung 1.609 times 10 to the power of negative 19. So, ito yung charge no, ng isang proton or ng isang electron. No? So, 1.609 times 10 no? to the power of negative 19. So, the force acting between the charges is called an electric field. So, when we say electric field, so that is the force no? na, ano, na nag-exist between charges. So, either that is attraction or repulsion. So kapag attraction, so they are ano, different polarity. Kapag repulsion, repelling, so they are like polarity. So positive, positive, so they will repel, uh, repel negative, negative. So hindi sila maglalapit, maglalayo yan. But positive, negative, or negative, positive, so that will attract each other. So yan yung uh, concept of electric charge. So the unit for electric charge is column, no? So by definition, so ito pala yung ano, exact number ng ano ng um, charge, no? So the one column is ano, is ang isang column that possesses 6.25 times 10 to the power of 18 electrons. So kung balik tayo natin, 1.609 times 10 to the power of negative 19 column is equal to 1 electron. So ito, no? So this is how we are going to find the charge no given the number of electrons yan okay so for this for this example how many electrons are there in five columns no so using the formula okay solution so we have q so this is our charge is equal to the number of electrons over 6.25 times 10, 10 raised to the power of, so that is 18, no? Raised to the power of 18 um, column per electron, no? Pabalik tayo yata yung ano, electron per column pala. Kasi charge yung hinahanap. So, electron per column, Okay? So, ang given natin, we have given yung charge. So, hahanapin natin is number of electrons. So, to solve for the number of electrons, ikaw cross-multiply lang natin to dito. So, we have Q, well, that is the charge, times 6.25, times 10 raised to the power of 18 electrons per column is equal to the number of electrons. Okay? So, substituting our given na charge, which is 5 column. So, 5 column times 
times 10 raised to the power of 18 electrons per coulomb is equal to our number of electrons. Okay? Then, so, ito, mahalaga dito is you must use your calculator in solving this one, no? So, we have... So, nandyan po sa ano, baba ng ating screen, yung ating ano, um, projected na calculator. So, we have 5 times 6.25 times 10 raised to the power of 18. Okay, so the answer is 3.125 times 10 to the power of 19 no? electrons. So... That is 3, 3.125 times 10 raised to the power of 19 electrons. So, yan yung ating number of electrons in 5 column of charge. Yan. So, ito yung answer. Now, of course, uh, ano, exam, meron tong mga choices. No? Like, mamaya, meron tayong mga sets of uh, questions no? or mga problems. No, na meron siya mga choices, no, which is similar to the past na mga lumabas na mga board exam questions. Okay? Next. Next is we have voltage. No? So, voltage is the unit. Uh, the unit for voltage is volts. So, uh, voltage is defined as the work done per column of charge so that is one joule per column of charge so we have this formula in getting the voltage with uh, it pertains to its relationship between the work done by the electrons and the charge so a voltage is equal to work divided by the charge so your work is in volts your uh, your, your voltage is in vo volts your work or energy, the unit of that is in joule and your charge is in column. So meaning, if your, um, if your charge exerts no, greater force, no, so makakaroon ng mas mataas na voltage. But if your charge only exerts a little force, no, konti lang kanyang joule na inexert, so the resulting voltage will be also lesser no so the voltage is like sa ano tubo or sa tubig so the the voltage is what is what we uh, normally compare to as the water pressure no so if if ma if malakas yung ano tubig so mas malakas yung agos so you, the pressure the water pressure is much stronger so katulad nito if the work done by the charge is ano is uh, mas maliit so the the electrical pressure or the voltage itself is much uh, uh, smaller no compared if mas mataas yung ini-exert niya na work okay so the other um, term for voltage is potential difference no so ito yung ibang tawag sa kanya potential difference so it is called potential difference because voltage is usually measured between two terminals of different um, flow of electrons. No? So, kapag testing tayo ng voltage, so ang tinitest natin line 1 and line 2. So, we are not testing line 1 to line 1. So, you say line 1, line 2, line 2, line 3, line 3, line 1, or if we are having single phase to our system, so line live and neutral. No? So, kaya itataw siya potential difference. The other is EMF, no, which stands for electromotive force, no. Yan. So your voltage is also known as EMF or electromotive force. So usually we use electromotive force as the term, the proper term for voltage in if we are um, analyzing AC circuits, no. So, because ang ibig sabihin ng electromotive force, so that is uh, uh, force uh, caused by magnetism or electromagnetism, the motive is moving, no? which move the 
ano, the current or the charges. Okay? So we have here an example problem. How much work is exerted to push 5 kilograms of charge at a potential difference of 230 volts? No? So sa inyo dyan na may idea kung paano to isolve. So you could also chat no? or give your answer by using our Google Meet chat box. Okay? So first is ang pinaka ano mga for the first timer na magso-solve ng problem the very first thing to do is to determine the given no so dito may nakalagay na 5c so that is column so that will be your charge no the next is 230 volts so that will be your voltage so 230 volts tapos hinahanap is work so meaning hinahanap dito is work so you have you have the voltage and you have also the uh, charge so kung babalikan natin yung ating formula so e is equal to w over q no yan so e ayan bakit nag ano nag forward lang bigla okay so e is equal to work or W over Q. So, ang inahanap is yung W. So, i-cross multiply lang dito. So, we have E, Q. No? Parang, parang, parang diaper lang. No? E, Q, diaper. Times uh, is equal to W. So, dito, masasolve mo na yung work. So, you have 230 volts. So, that will be your voltage. Times your Q, which is your 5 column. No? That is equal to W. Okay. So, using your calculator. So, we have 230 volts times 5. Okay. So, our answer is 1,150. No? So, 1,150. So, the unit for work is Joule. No? Joule. So, ito yung tamang sagot. So, if my choices dito, tapos ito yung lumabas sa solution mo, tapos nandiyan sa choices, so that is 100%, no? 100% sure na yun yung answer. No? If you are, or if you use the proper formula, no? So, kunyari, ito yung solution nyo, tapos, tapos, ito yung lumabas na question, tapos sa choices, ito din yung, ano, makikita mo din tong value na to. So that is 100% the correct answer, no? Unless dito sa solution mo may mali ka or during sa pag-input ng kalkyo mo may namali ka ng input. So yun yung magiging dahilan na hindi magiging tama yung sagot mo. Okay, next we have current, no? So current is the movement of free electrons, no? The flow again is from negative to positive. Then the amount, this is also the amount of electrical charge that flows in an electrical circuit per second. So the unit for current is in amperes or it is also given in the formula I is equals to Q over T. No? So your I is current with the unit amperes. Q, no, itong Q, itong charge, uh, kanina pa to, no? the unit for charge is column. And your T is time and the unit must be in seconds. So in, uh, in case na yung given sa problem is minutes, so dapat yung minutes i-convert mo ng seconds. If R, so dapat yung R i-convert mo ng seconds. No? So kunyari, no? Ito, uh, ilalagay ko lang dito yung conversion. No? So yung 1 minute, that is 60 seconds. No? Yung 1 R, yung 1R, so that is equal to 3,600 seconds. So, ang tanong ngayon, paano kung one day? No? So, madali lang. No? So, yung 360 seconds, that is, uh, that is 1R. So, tapos ilang R sa, ano, sa isang araw, so that is 24. No? Kung ano mang sagot nito, that will now be D number of seconds in one day. Pag one month, so ito, it times mo lang ng 30. Pag 
kapag one year, so it times mo lang ng 365 days. No? So that is how we are going to convert time, no? Na hindi siya naka-seconds into seconds. Okay? So we have this sample problem. So a wire is carrying 40 amperes. How much charge is on the wire? Okay. Solution. So, ang given, we have the current, which is equal to 40 amperes. Then, the time is 5 seconds. So, ang inahanap is charge. Okay. So, the formula is I is equal to Q over T. Okay. So, yan, no? So, may nag-answer ng 200 column, no? So, let's see, no? If that is 200 column. Okay, so the inahanap is charge, so cross multiply, so I, T is equal to Q, so yung current mo is 40 amperes, yung time mo is 5 seconds, so Q, so 40 times 5, so kahit hindi na i-calcula yan, that is 200, so the unit for co-charge is columns, so 200 columns, so tama yung nag Lagay ng kanyang answer sa ating chat box. Okay? Next, we have resistance. No? So, going back to our ana, uh, our analogy, no? sa tubig, no? a, a water in a pipe. So, yung voltage is the water pressure. The current is the volume ng tubig na dumadaan sa pipe. And the resistance is the obstruction. Yan yung magiging valve, no? or yung magiging ano yung magiging ano niya um, yung stop niya no magiging stop or yung kapag enough natin yung gripo no so that will be analogous to resistance so because resistance all materials have some amount of resistance and that resistance restricts the flow of current no so ang unit for resistance is in ohms no okay so, that is named after George Simon Ohm, which is the man who, who formulated the Ohm's law. No? So, so, mamayang konti, we will be tackling also Ohm's law. Okay? So, that is resistance. So, that is the, the property of a material that restricts the flow of um, current. No? So, the unit is in Ohms. So, there are two types of material. No? Types of material. Okay? Yan. So, which is according to the resistance. So, una yung natawag nating conductor. No? Conductor, it has a diba? Bakit iba yung spelling ko ng low? Yan. Low resistance. So, a conductor has low resistance. No? So, the perfect example for this one are yung ginagamit natin as wire, which is copper, no? also the silver. No? So, almost all metals are conductors. Yung isa naman is yung kabaliktara ng conductor, which is an insulator. No? An insulator have or has high resistance. No? Okay. So, ito yung sa wire, no? kung sa wire natin, yung pinakagitna is copper, silver, or aluminum. No? Yung aluminum pa pala yung pinakakomo natin. Yung, yung nakabalot sa kanya, ang tawag doon is insulation. So, that is the insulator, which is usually no? rubber or thermoplastic. No? Okay, thermoplastic. Yan. But all insulator will become conductors if they have moisture or nabasa sila. No, even rubber, kahit pa sabi natin rubber is a good insulator, kapag ang rubber nabasa, it will become a conductor no? because a, yung ano, moisture, yung water is a good conductor of electricity. So, kaya nakakuryente pa rin kahit meron ano kahit rubber yung ginagamit nyo. No? Okay? 
Yan. So, when it comes to electronics naman, no, which we also be tackling uh, sa electrical components natin, meron pang pangatlong type of material. That is a semiconductor. No? So, a semiconductor is a material that exists between a conductor and insulator. So, it um, it becomes, no, it becomes a conductor at a certain temperature, no? Yan, certain temperature. Okay, so yan yung semiconductor. No, so usually semiconductor is used in electronic circuits. No, so yung mga mga diode, um, transistors, ICs. No, so yan yung ano mga semiconductor natin na mga components. No, so ang semiconductor na mga material. No, we have the three most common semiconductor: silicon, germanium, and gallium arsenide. No, so yan yung tatlo. So in case no, kasi last time may lumabas pertaining to communication no yung yung paano i uh, able broadcast yung signal no so if, kahit hindi yung kasama sa technical subject so that is still part of the ano yung sa field ng ano ng electrical because yung electronics and communication is just a subfield of electrical engineering no so kaya uh, pwede yang mapasama sa ano sa questions pero isa lang naman yung mga ganong questions. No, kasi ang nakalagay kasi sa ano sa uh, topics is may pinakalas na part doon and other topics that the board may include. No, so kaya pwede nilang idagdag yung ganon nga topic as long as is part of electrical engineering field. Yan. So if in case ano this time they will have questions pertaining to ano electronics so alam niyo na yung semiconductor no and sa next natin nga topic all about electrical components we will also learning about diode the the basic concepts of diode uh, transistors and also ICs no okay then we have electrical power so it is known or it is defined as the rate of consuming electrical energy so the unit is in watt no watts no So kapag ano kapag hindi alam kung ano yung power, sasabihin natin watt, no? Okay, so the formula is P is equal to IE, no? Ako kapa para hindi ko talaga makalimutan 'to, ang ginagawa ko binabaliktad ko yung ano yung I at E, ay yung E at I. Ang ginagawa ko is IE for short pi, no? So the formula for finding the power is as easy as pi. So power is equal to current times voltage no so the unit for power watts your e is your voltage in volts and your i is in your current in amperes so yung note dito no sa ano kasi sa english system english system the unit for power is hp or horsepower samantalang sa si ito yon no which is watts. So 1 horsepower is equal to 746 watts. No. So this is constant, hindi na to ma mababago, no. 1 HP is equal to 746 watts. Then we have electrical energy. So that is the capacity of electricity to do work. So the unit for electrical energy so for uh, may dalawa siya, no. The first one is kilowatt hour. So this is the commercial unit of electrical energy. When we say commercial unit, yan yung unit na na ginagamit if you are going to sell electricity or electrical energy. So in, in ano layman's term, yan yung binabayaran natin, the kilowatt hour, no, na unit. So sa ano sa ano ba yan sa sa Miralco ba yan, sa Vico, or kahit anong utility company, no? So, binabayaran natin is kilowatt hour, no? So, nakadepende lang yan if magkano yung per kilowatt hour natin, no? If, if that is 25, 15, 9, 10, so hindi ko alam kung ano yung pinakamura na uh, rate ng, ano, ng kilowatt hour sa Pilipinas kasi nakadepende yan sa utility, utility company kasi, ano, 
depending on the province also no so may ibang province na isa lang yung utility company meron namang dalawa meron tatlo so yun no so but i am certain na yung pinakamahal na ano kilowatt hour is mostly sa mga highly urbanized na mga areas no kung saan mataas yung demand for electricity okay next is joule no joule is the unit for energy no so Uh, yung ating ano yung ating kuryente hindi siya binebenta ng joule but in kilowatt hour so joule is the unit for energy in physics no yung mga ano yung pagso-solve ng mga problems so ginagamit is in joule okay so yung 1 kilowatt hour so the formula for kilowatt hour so this is equal to watts no divide 1000 Then you multiply that with the number of hours used. So ilang oras ginamit, no? Okay. For example, yung TV, no? So yung yung TV mo is 50 watts, no? Tapos, yung gamit nito ng calculator natin. Okay. So yung TV is 50 watts. So yung TV is 50 watts. Yan. So, yung 50, i-divide mo ng 1,000. Tapos, ginamit siya for, sabihin nating ano, uh, 8 hours. 8 uh, hours, so times 8. So, ito yung kayang kilowatt hour. 0.4 kilowatt hour. Yan. Okay. So, sa isang araw, ginamit mo ng 8 hours yung TV mo na 50 watts. So, malamang itong TV na to is LED TV, no? So, kasi medyo mababa lang yung kanyang wattage. So, you will be consuming 0.4 kilowatt hour. So, maintain niya ng paggamit for one month, no? 8 hours, so times 30. Yan. So, you will be consuming 12 kilowatt hour in a month. Tapos, ipagulagay natin yung per kilowatt hour no ng utility company niyo is 25 so 12 times 25 so in a month for your TV alone na nagagamit niyo ng 8 hours per day na ang kanyang rating is 50 watts she so will be paying 300 pesos yan no 300 pesos so how how about if aircon no Air, aircon o di kaya ay ano Uh, tawag doon yung mga electric stove niyo no yung mga heater no so the usual matataas ang konsumo ng kuryente is yung heating appliances no yung mga uh, appliances na, ginaga, na gumagamit or yung kanyang output is heat no so use for cooking no yan kadalasan matataas yan ng ano consumption uh, aside from that yung gagamit for Uh, yung sa ano so yung, yung sa pagpaplansya no your electric iron so that is also an unheating appliances or the air conditioning no so aircon ref yan so yan yung mga madalas na matataas yung mga uh, consumption no okay so that this is the formula for um kilowatt hour no okay yan So we have this question. So what is the potential difference if 5 kilojoule of energy pushed to 1,900 coulomb of charge? Yan. Okay. So ito parang ano? Ito yung question. Oh, this question is sa voltage kanina. Inahanap kasi is potential difference. So you have you are given with the work. So ito kg that is kilojoule. So that is 5 kilo Joule. So, itong 5 kilojoule gawin mo yung joule. So, yung kilo that is 10 to the power of 3. So, 10 to the power of 3. So, 1 followed by 3, 0. So, that is 1,000 times 5. So, you have 5,000 joule. Tapos, yung 2,900C that is in, yung C is column. So, yan yung magiging charge natin. So, 2,900 column. Okay? So, yung voltage is equal to work over charge. Okay? So, ano yung magiging sagot dito? No? Okay? So, we have 5 
1,000 Joule divide 2,900 Coulomb. Okay, so we have 5,000 divide 2,900. So, meron tayong 1.72 no, volts. So, the answer is 1.72 volts. Wala. Okay, next we have capacitance. No? So, capacitance is the property of a system of conductors and dielectrics which permits the storage of electrical, electrically separated charges when a potential difference exists between the conductors. So, basically, ito yung principle na nasa loob ng mga capacitors. No? So, there exists a dielectric with, which is separated by an insulator na ang nangyayari is because there exists a potential difference between them, so doon na store yung ating charge. No? And the, the amount of charge that is stored per unit of potential difference or per voltage is what we call as capacitance. No? So, the unit for capacitance is farad. Yan. So, ito yung formula. So, C, that is capacitance, is equals to Q over E. No? So, yung Q natin, again, column. Yung E natin is volts. Okay? So, we have which is the capacitance or what is the capacitance of a capacitor that carries 3,000 column of charge at 300 volts. Okay? Solution. So, yung ating charge is 3,000 column. Yung ating voltage is 300 volts. Ang hinahanap dito is the capacitance. No? So, going back sa ating formula, yan. So, C is equal to Q over E. So, we have 3,000 column divide 300 volts. So, our capacitance is equal to so 10. No? 10. So, the unit is farad. So, 10 F. So, ito na yung ating answer. Okay? Next, we have elastance. No? Elastance is just the reciprocal of your capacitance. No? So, yung capacitance mo, no? so, i-divide mo lang siya sa 1. So, 1 divided by the given capacitance, and that is now your elastance. So, the unit for elastance is DARAF. No? DARAF yung unit ng elastance. So, kapag yung DARAF binaliktad mo, fara din yan. No? So, kasi yung elastance is just the reciprocal of your um, capacitance. No? So, parang binaliktad mo lang din yung unit nila. Okay, so we have this one. A 30 farad capacitor has an elastance of blank. Yan. So, ano yung elastance niyan? Okay, so solution. So, ito, madali lang ito. No? If, if ganito yung lumabas, as long as you know the definition of an elastance, so madali lang yung pagsagot. No? So, Q is equals to, or C pala, pakit Q. Nabayan. So, Q is equal... Bakit Q pa rin? Dapat si... Ano ba yan? Yan. So, C is equal to 30 farad. No? So, your elastance, S, is equal to 1 over C. So, 1 over 30. So, you have... So, 1 divided by 30. Yan. So, this is equal to 0 0.033, no? So, 0 0.033 DARAF. Yan. Okay. So, this now will be your 
answer. Okay, so conductance is the reciprocal of your resistance. So it is the ability of the material to conduct electricity. The unit for conductance is Siemens, which is formerly known as Mo. So parang itong Mo, binaliktal na ninyo yung ohms. No? So the formula for the conductance is ito. No? Ito yung pinaka main na formula. If given yung resistance, so 1 over R. So if we have if we are if we are to consider the resistance of the wire or the conductance of the wire ito yung maging formula. So the the conductivity times the area divided by the length, no? So mamaya ang konti will be tackling also the resistance in the wire. So we'll be going back to this formula. But for this one ito yung magiging focus natin. Conductance is equals to 1 over R. So the unit for conductance is in Siemens or Mo. Okay? So for this one, a 20 meter wire has a total resistance of 2 ohms. What is its equivalent conductance? Okay. So solution. So merong given dito or merong number na binigay dito sa question na walang gamit. No? Kasi yung hinahanap na is conductance. So yung resistance mo is 2 ohms. Given mo din yung ano, uh, meter, so that is the length, no? 20 meters. So, ang hinahanap lang is yung conductance, which is equal to 1 over R. So, we have 1 over 2 ohms, which is equal to 0 0.5. So, the unit for that one is Siemens. So, itong 20 meters na length, so wala tong gamit. Okay? Then we have going to uh, electromagnetism. So we have magnetomotive force or the, or the A MMF. So that is a force that sets up or tends to set up the magnetic flux in a magnetic circuit by passing an electric current through a number of turns of a wire that produces it. So this is the unit or this is a symbol for magnetomotive force. So, equal to the number of turns times the current. So, the unit for MMF is ampere turn. Okay. So, if we are having our um, MMF in CGS, so meaning CGS uh, centimeter grams and second a unit, so the unit will be called as Gilbert. No? So, the formula is... 0.4 pi, so magkakaroon na ng 0.45 pi times the number of turns times the current. Okay, so find the MMF of a, of a coil, 300 turns, and carries a current of 5 amperes. So, hinahanap dito is the magnetomotive force. Okay, so yung number of turns natin is 300 turns habang yung ating current is 5 amperes okay so our magnetomotive force so that is n times i so we have 300 turns times 5 ampere so that is equal to 1500 at no or Ampere turns. Okay, so how many Gilberts of MMF has 1,700 turns of coil carrying 30 amperes? Okay, so ito, dito is Gilberts. No, yung kanina naka ampere turns, so ito Gilberts. No, so the number of turn is 1,700 turns. Yung ating current is equal to 30 amperes. So our formula will be different kasi Gilbert yung hinahanap na unit. So that is 0 0.4 pi n times i. So we have 0 0.4 pi times 1,700 turns times 30 amperes. Okay. So, the correct answer for this one, so ito kailangan natin ng calculator. Kasi kailangan natin kunin yung value ng pi. So, 0.4 shift ito, 10 to the x which results for 
pi yung maglalabas sa calculator. Times 1,700 times 30 amperes. So, this is equal to 20,400 pi. So, para maging maging decimal ito, so, i-click nyo lang yung ano, yung SD na button. So, that is 64,088.5. No? So, 64,088.5. Ang unit ito is in Gilberts. Okay. So, ito na yung magiging answer. Okay? Next, we have magnetic flux. So, magnetic flux is the number of magnetic lines of force in a mag magnetic field. So, kunyari may magnet tayo, yung force, no? yung magnetic lines of force that exist uh, on the magnetic field of your magnet is what we call as magnetic flux. Kung ilan siyang invisible magnetic lines of force na yan, so makikita to if you are going to have, if you're going to put no? iron fillings doon sa magnet, so ito yung makikreate niya na ano, pattern. So, every pattern doon is, is one magnetic flux or every line on isang magnetic flux. Okay, so the unit for magnetic flux is for SI system or the CGS system is Maxwell. No? Equal to one line of force. So, ito, isang Maxwell. Ito din, isa, isa, isa. So, meron tayong four Maxwells. For the SI system, ang unit na ginagamit is in Weber. So, 1 Weber is equal to 1 times 10 to the power of 8 Maxwell. So, ito ang kanyang equivalent. So, ang 1 Weber is equal to 1 followed by 8 zeros Maxwell. Then, you have leakage flux. No? So, a flux that does not follow the intended path in a magnetic circuit. So, yung flux na dapat ano ifa-follow niya yung core no yung kanyang core or yung kanyang magnet pero hindi niya na-follow due to some interference no depending on the material of the magnet so so hindi niya na-follow yung pattern no ng kanyang magnetic field so ang tawag doon is leakage flux so magnetic flux density that is the number of lines or the number of magnetic flux per unit area through any substance in a plane at right angles to the line of flux. So, meaning, ilang flux ang makikita per area, which is, ang kanilang, ano, ang kanilang crossing is 90 degrees, no, with respect to the lines of force. Okay? So, the unit for magnetic flux density is N Tesla. No? So, named after Nikola Tesla, no, the, ano, the the person who um, initiated no using uh, to use ac power instead of dc then flux is in weber tapos yung ating area a is surface perpendicular so the unit for area is square meter so if in case the given is square inches so you will convert that one into meter okay so we could also have gauss no so gauss is cgs unit Ayan, pakitang forward. So, ang Gauss is, ano, CGS unit. So, yung sa Tesla is SI. So, the Gauss is Maxwell per square centimeter. No? Kasi yung Tesla is Weber per square meter. Yung Gauss is Maxwell per square centimeter. Then, we have magnetic field intensity. So, that is the MMF or the magnetomotive force per unit length of path of the magnetic flux. So, this is a formula H is equal to NI. So, ito yung formula for uh, the magnetomotive force. So, divide L. No? So, kaya ito yung magiging equivalent niya. No? Your L is mean length flux uh, in meter. Kap so, Ang unit ng ano ng magnetic field intensity in SI is ampere torn per meter. Kapag CGS na so or Gil ang Gilbert per centimeter yung magiging ano niya unit but the equivalent unit for that one is Orsted. Yeah. So that is the CGS unit for magnetic field intensity. Okay, so we have a 300 square meter sphere contains 0.3 weber of flux. So, what is the 
flux density. So, the given units are Weber at square meter. So, malamang yung magiging unit natin dito is in Tesla. No? Solution. So, the given um, flux no? is 0 0.3 Weber. The given area is 300 square meter. So, ang hinahanap natin is the flux density. So, we have flux divide area. So, we have 0 0.3 Weber divide 300 square meter. Okay? So, we have 0 0.3 divide 300. So, the answer is... So, that is 1 times 10 to the power of negative 3. So, 1 times 10 to the power of negative 3 Tesla. No? So, yung 1 times 10 to the power of negative 3 natin, if you remember sa ating, ano, sa ating SI prefixes, so this is equal to, ito, equal to siya sa milli. So, you could write your final answer as 1 milli Tesla. So, 1 M T. No, pwede rin isulat nyo yung mili dito as a word. Okay? So, this will be your answer. Okay, next. The flux density of a 30 square meter of wire containing um, 7,000 Maxwell's of flux is blank. So, ang given is square centimeter tapos that is for the area. Tapos, ang kanyang flux is in Maxwell. Okay? So, solution. Okay, so the area is 30 square meter. Tapos, ang kanyang flux is 7,000 Maxwell. No? So, ano pala to? Centimeter pala to. No? Okay. So, square centimeter. So, our flux density is equal to flux over the area. So, we have 7,000 Maxwell's divide 30 square centimeter. Okay. So, your answer will be 7,000 Divided by 30. Yan. So, that is 233.33. So, 233.33 Gauss. Yan. Ba to? Bakit may lumabas to? Okay. Okay, so that is 233.33 Gauss. So Gauss is the CGS unit for flux density. Okay, so the magnetic field intensity of an electromagnet having a total number of turns of 2000 turns of 2000 and carrying a current of 5 amperes and the mean length of fluxes at 3 meters is blank. So, inahanap is yung magnetic field intensity. So, the, ang given, yung number of turns is 200 at 2000. The current is 5 amperes. Tapos, yung length niya is equal to 3 meters. Okay? So, yung H, that is equal to Ni over L. So, we have 2,000 times 5 amperes, no? Over 3 meters. Okay? So, we have 2,000 times 5 over 3. Okay. So, you have 3,333.33. 3, 
no? So, 3,333.33. So, the unit is ampere turn per meter. So, ito na yung ating magnetic field intensity. Okay. So, now we go to the properties of wires. Okay. So, the resistance of a wire is given by the formula rho L over A. So, your rho is the resistivity of the material. Your L is the length, no, yung haba ng wire. Your area is in cross-sectional area. And kapag given yung volume, so your V is your volume. So, the unit, no, kung yari yung lahat natin is the resistance, so ohms lang lahat. Our resistivity is the one that will vary usually yung kanyang unit. No? Ohms meter, ohms centimeter, tapos ohms cm. Cm is circular mil per feet. So kapag ang given is ohm meter, dapat yung length mo is meter, yung area is square meter, yung volume is cubic meter. If the given for resistivity is ohm centimeter, so dapat yung length is centimeter, yung area is square centimeter. Tapa, tapos yung volume is cubic meter. If the given is ohm circular mirror per feet, so yung length mo is dapat naka-feet, yung area is naka-circular mils. And, okay, so we have here, determine the resistance of a bus bar of copper if the length is one, uh, 100 meters long and the diameter of the wire is 1.15 mm. So use the resistivity, no, 1.72 micro ohm centimeter. Okay, so solution. So first, is what yung given. So una is yung resistivity. So that is 1.7241 micro ohm centimeter. So micro that is uh, times 10 to the power of negative 6, uh, negative 6, no? 7 to 4, 1 times 10 to the power of negative 6 ohm centimeter. So, dapat ohm centimeter to, so dapat lahat ng ating unit must be also in centimeter and square centimeter, katulad sa table kanina. Okay, so our length is 100 meters. So, i-convert natin to into centimeters. So, we just multiply this one by 100, no? Para maging centimeter, no? So, we have 100 times 100. So, this is equal to 10,000, no? So, we have 10,000 centimeters, okay? Then, your diameter is equal to 1.15 mm. So, i-divide nyo lang to ng 10 para maging centimeter. No? Ayan. So, we have 1.15 mm divided by 10. So, that is equal to 0 0.115. So, 0 0.115 centimeter. So, ating formula is R is equal to rho L over A. So, dito, meron tayong resistivity, length, meron na, wala tayong area. But, alam natin that given the diameter, so, the area of a wire, no, given the diameter, is equal to pi d squared over 4. No? So, this is just the area of a circle. No? So, pi times 0 0.115 squared Divide, divide, 4. Okay. So, gamitin natin calcule later. So, we have shift pi times 0.115 squared over 4. So, that is equal to 0 0.014, no? 0 0.1 0 0.0104 no so 0 0.0104 uh, this is in square centimeter so we substitute natin yan so we have the resistivity is 1.7241 times 10 to the power of negative 6 ohm centimeter 
yung length natin is 10,000 centimeter. Then our area is 0 0.0104 square centimeter. So we could cancel now our centimeter. So ang matitira lamang is the resistance which is in ohms, no? So calculate natin 1.7 241 times 10 to the power of negative 6 times 10,000 divide 0 0.0104 okay so the correct answer is 1.66 so 1.66 no so, 1.66 ohms, no? Yung kanyang sagot. Okay. So, we have 1.66 ohms. Okay? Then, next, we have circular mill. No? Yung CM, kanina natin, that is circular mill. That is the area of a circle having a diameter of 1 mil. So, yung 1 mil na unit or yung 1 mil is equal to 0 0.001 inches. Kung balik tali natin yan, 1 inch is equal to 1 over 1,000 mil. No? So, the circular mil is equal to d squared. Wherein your d, ang diameter nito is in mils. So, note. 1 mcm is equal to 1,000 circular mils. So, kasi kadalasan yung wire, when it comes to English system, the unit is in mils. Yan. Or in cm or mcm. So, that is mega circular mil, which is equal to 1,000 cm. Okay. So, what is the diameter of a wire? Of a what is the diameter of a 150 mcm wire in inches? No, so, ito yung mcm, i-convert natin yung diameter niya into inches. So, this is usually yung mga medyo mahihirap na question when it comes to problem solving sa RME. So, first, we need to convert no, our mcm into mils. Kasi, ang al alam kasi natin na yung 1 inch is equal to 1 over 1,000 mils. So, ito yung alam natin na equivalent niya. So, dapat yung MCM natin magiging mils. Okay. So, first, 1 MCM, that is equal to 1,000 circular mil. So, ibig sabihin nito, yung ating 150 MCM, so that is just equal to 150 times 1,000 cm. So, meron tayong 150 times 1,000. No? So, that is equal to 150,000. No? So, 150,000 cm. Alam din natin na yung cm is equal to d squared. Na yung d dito is the diameter of wire in mils. So, para makuha natin yung mils, so, yung ating cm i-square root natin. No? So, our, our, the square root of our cm now is equal to the diameter of wire in mils. Okay? So, i-substitute natin. So, square root of 150,000 cm. So, meron na tayong square root of 100 50,000. So, that is 387.3. So, 387.3 mils. No? So, i-convert natin to. So, yung ating 1 inch is equal to 1 over 1,000 mils. No? So, yan po yung ating 1 inch. Okay. So, ma we will be left with, so, minyari yung 387.3, i-divide lang natin yan ng 1,000. Okay? 
So we have 0 0.387. So 0 0.387 inches. No? Or inch. Kasi hindi yan, ano, umabot ng 1. Inch lang unit niyan. Yan. Okay. So ito na yung ating correct answer. Okay? Next is effect of temperature and resistance. So the effect basically of temperature and resistance is that kapag tumaas yung temperature mo, tataas din yung resistance. Yan. So yan yung pinaka-effect niya. If we are going to have that one in calculation, so ito yung mga formula. Okay? So ito din, pwede rin to na formula. At ito, no? So, your R2 is your new resistance. Your R1 is the initial. Your T is the inferred temperature. So, that is the temperature in which the resistance of your material is zero. No? So, depending on the type of the material, iba-iba ang kanilang inferred temperature. Your T2 is the final temperature and your T1 is the initial temperature. Your alpha T1, that is the temperature coefficient of resistance. So it's, it's just a fancy way of saying what will be the uh, the equivalent resistance of a given material at a given temperature. So it is given with the formula 1 over T, the inferred temperature, plus T1, which is the initial temperature. Okay, so these are the usual um, resistivity, the inferred temperature, and the temperature coefficient at 20 degrees of common conductors. No? So we have silver, so that is 9.9 .9 ohm circular mil per feet. Its inferred temperature is 243 degrees Celsius. When we say 243 degrees Celsius, hindi po to siya yung positive. This is negative. No? All of these are negative degree Celsius. No? Because a a certain no, material will become a superconductor at temperatures below zero. So, ito lahat naka negative degree Celsius. Yung alpha or the temperature coefficient at 20 degrees is ito, 0 0.0038 per Celsius degree. Yan. So, copper, ganun din. Then, for aluminum, tungsten, at yung zinc. So, dito makikita nyo dito alin yung pinaka- mababa yung resistivity. No? Yung pinakamababa yung resistivity, yan yung pinaka-best conductor, which is for this group is silver. Yan. Okay, so a wire has a resistance of 30 ohms at 40 degrees Celsius. If the temperature is increased to 60 degrees, what is the resistance at this temperature if the temperature coefficient at 20 degrees Celsius is 0 0.00393? No? So, ito, this is one also of the hardest problem. No? Pwede ibigay during the RME exam. No? So, it, this type of problem will utilize. No? Gagamitin nyo talaga lahat ng formula to, no? So, all of this formula. Okay? So, ang hinahanap kasi dito is the final temperature. No? So, yung ating given is, yung ating initial temperature is 30 ohms. So, yung, yung kasama na ano niyan, temperature niyan is 40 degrees Celsius. That will, that will be our initial. Tapos, ang hanapan natin ng resistance at a certain temperature so, it will be our T2. So, it is 60 degrees Celsius. Tapos, given din tayo ng alpha. So, T, ang, that is temperature coefficient at 20 degrees. So, dito 20 to. No? 20, which is equal to 0 0.00393. So, ang formula ang gagamitin natin is R2 over R1 is equal to T plus T2 over T plus T1. No? So, kung R2 yung hahanapin, so R2 is equal to R1 T plus T2 over 
t plus t1. Ang problema natin, wala tayong t, the inferred temperature. No? So, alam natin sa formula kanina, ito, yan. So, our alpha 20 is equal to 1 over t plus dito kung ano yung temperature coefficient dito, which is 20. So, the value of this one is 0 0.00393. So, equal to 1 over t plus 20. No? So, pagpalitin natin silang dalawa. So, we have t plus 20 is equal to 1 over 0 0.00393. So, ito kapag lipatin sa kabila, so magiging minus yan. So, 1 over 0 0.00393 minus 20. So, meron na tayong inferred temperature. No? So, 1 divide 0 0.00393 minus 20. Okay. So, meron tayong 234.45. So, 234.45 degrees Celsius. So, substitute lang natin yan dito. Our R1 is 30 ohms. Okay. So, we have 234.45 plus tito natin is 60 over 234.45 plus uh, 40. No? So, masasolve natin dito yung ating R2. Okay. So, we have So, 30, so that is times 234.45 plus 60 over 234.45 oops, plus 40. So, equal to 32.19. No? So, 32.19 ohms. So, sa problem na to you can also prove na kapag nag-increase yung temperature, no, from 40, so yung temperature natin, ay yung uh, resistance natin is 30 ohms, tapos nag-increase siya ng 60 degrees, so nag-increase din yung ating resistance into 32.9. So, that is the effect of temperature in resistance. Okay. So, we now have Ohm's law. Yan. So, Ohm's law is states that the current drawn by the circuit is inversely proportional and the proportion, proportionality constant will be equal to the voltage of the circuit. So, meaning your current is just equal to your voltage over your resistance. If hinahanap yung ano, yung resistance, so ito yung Ohm's law triangle, so i-cover mo lang yung resistance. So resistance is equal to voltage over the current or ito, cross multiply mo lang sila. If you want to ano, if you want to find the voltage, so ito ilipat mo lang diyan sa kabila so that will be current times resistance or ito yung gagamitin mo i-cover mo yung voltage so i times the resistance yeah so this is ohm's law in which we could solve um, any of the three electrical quantities in a circuit resistance current and voltage if may given sa kanila na dalawa no okay yan okay so we have an example Find the resistance if the, if the power supplied is 500 watts while 10 ampere of current is flowing on it. So, meron daw tayong ano, load na 50 watts tapos 10 amperes yung ating current. Okay? Solution. Ayan. Kit ganyan on. Okay. Okay. Solution. Okay. So, our 
ano, our given power is equals to 500 watts. Tapos yung current natin is 10 amperes. So, hinahanapan hinahan, hinahan tayo ng resistance. So, to solve for resistance, that is equal to voltage over the current. So, may current tayo pero wala tayong voltage sa given. Pero may power. So, alam natin na yung power is pi. Easy as pi. So, P is equals to I times E. So, mula dito, masusolve natin yung voltage. Kasi mayroong power, mayroong current sa given. So, voltage, ito ilipat nyo sa kabila. So, magiging divisor yan ng ano, P natin. So, we have 500 watts divide the current which is 10 amperes. So, 500 divided by 10, that will be 5. No? 5 volts. No? So, tama ba? Hindi pala 50 pala. 50. Medyo na ano ha? Sa ano ako sa 500 divided by 10. No? 500, i-calculate lang natin. Yun, 50 pala. No? 50 volts. Yan. So, we have voltage, so we can now solve for our resistance. So, 50 volts divided by 10 amperes. So, our resistance is equal to 5 ohms. So, ito na yung magiging answer natin. Okay. Okay, now let's try some practice tests or practice questions. No? Okay. So, each of these ano, questions, meron po tayong one minute to answer. No? If you, then just put your answer on our Google Meet chat box. Okay? So, first question. So, meron, meron po yung timer sa baba. Yan. Ay, ano ba? Bakit na forward? Okay. So, a current of 5 amperes flow through a conductor against a potential difference of 200 volts. So, the power di dissipated will be blank. So, hanapin lang po is yung wattage or yung power. Okay, so we have here, nabaliktad yung pen ko. Okay, so, so easy as pi, no? ito yung formula natin for power. So, P is equals to I times E. So, yung given natin, the current is 5 amperes. The voltage is 200 volts. So, meron tayong 200 times... 5. Yan. So, that is equal to 1,000 watts. No? So, the correct answer, bukit pesos. The correct answer is letter A. Yan. Okay. Next, a capacitor stores blank. Ito. So, but ito walang problem solving. No? Terms lang to or concept. No? So, a capacitor stores voltage, power, current, or charge
Okay. So, ito for one minute ulit, no? Okay, solution po natin. Hinahanap po is power. So, the given is the resistance which is 20 ohms. Then, the current which is 10 amperes. So, power yung hinahanap. So, yung formula is C as pi. So, wala po tayong voltage but we have current and resistance. So, we could solve the voltage which is equal to current times the resistance. So, we have 10 amperes times 20 ohms. So, this is equal to 200 volts. No? So, meron na tayong current, 10 amperes. Yung voltage natin is 200 volts. So, we will have 2,000 watts. No? The problem is walang 2,000 watts sa uh, Choices. So, lahat is naka kilowatts. So, gawin natin yung ating answer dito. We'll convert that one into kilowatts. So, just divide that one by 1,000. So, 2,000 divide 1,000. That will be 2 kilowatts. So, the correct answer will be letter D. Okay? So, tama po yung nag, ano, lagay na kalang answer sa ating chat box. Okay, next. Uh, 100 volt is applied to a circuit of resistance of 10 ohms. The power dissipated by the resistance will be blank. So, nahanap po ito is power given the voltage and the resistance. Okay, so solution, yan. So the given, the voltage is 100 volts, the resistance is 10 ohms, ang hinahanap ulit is power. So ganun pala primula, pi pa rin tayo, but we don't have the current. But we know from ohms law, current is equal to voltage over the resistance. So we have 100 volts divided by 10 
ohms. So that is equal to 10 amperes. So we have 10 amperes times 100 volt. So that is equal to 1000 watts. So the correct answer is letter B. Okay, next. So energy consumed by a heater of rating 1000 watts by operating it for a period of 2 hours will be black. Okay, so again, 1 minute. Okay, solution. So for this one, so yung power mo is 1000 watts. So yung number of hours is equal to 2. No? So to get the kilowatt hour, so you have the pa yung power, i-divide mo ng 1000. Tapos i-multiply mo sa number of hours. No? So you have 1000 watts divide divide 1000 times 2 no? so so 1000 divide divide 1000 so that will be 1 no? so 1 times 2 so your answer is 2 kilowatt r which is letter b okay next A 50 ohm resistance carrying 20 amperes of current uses blank watts of power. Okay, so katulad to kanina ng previous problem, no? Na given yung resistance at amperes, no? Inahanap is power. Okay, solution. So we have my, uh, the other formula for this one, no? Para hindi yung medyo kailangan pag gamitan, gamitan ng Ohm's law. So power is just equal to I squared times R. Yan, so pwede mo itong gamitin, no? So this is also derived using yung formula for Ohm's law. So yung I mo, you know, the current is 20 amperes, while resistance is 15 ohms. No? So you have 20 squared times 15. Yan. Okay, so using your calculator, so we have 20 squared no, times 15. So this is equal to 6,000. No? 6,000 watts. Okay. Next. So, the resistance of a 3.6 kilowatt heater when operated from a 120 volt circuit is blank ohms.
Okay? So, solution. So, yung given natin, the power is 3.6 kilowatts. So, gawin po natin itong watts. So, just multiply that one by 1,000. So, we have 3,600 watts. Tapos, yung voltage is 120 volts. Okay? So, hinahanap is the resistance. Okay? So, resistance using Ohm's law, that is voltage over the current. Pero wala tayong current. But we know from the problem for power, that is pi. No? P is equals to I times E. So, dito masusulong natin ang current. So, current is equal to cross multiply power over the voltage. Yan. So, we have 3,600 watts divide 120 volts. No? So, we have 3,600 divide by 120. So, 30. No? So, we have 30 amperes. Okay? So, yung voltage natin, 120 volts divide by 30 amperes. So, our resistance is 4 ohms. No? So, the correct answer is B. So, ito medyo matastas. The shortcut of formula for this one is power is equal to E squared over R. So, yung R yung hinahanap mo, cross multiply mo lang. So, R is equals to E squared over P. So, we have 120 squared over 3,600 watts. So, yan yung magiging R mo pa rin, which is 4 ohms. So, try natin i-calcule. No? So, we have 3,000, ano ba? 120 pala. 120 squared over 3,600. Okay, so 4 ohms. Okay, next. If a light bulb rated at 100 watts at 120 volts is connected across a 240 volt source, the wattage will be blank. Okay. Okay, solution. Okay, so meron tayong ano, conditional na problem, no? So yung first, yung 100 watt na bulb will be supplied by a 20 volt source. So ito yung kanyang rating. So ang tanong ngayon, ano yung magiging wattage kapag kinotake natin at 240 volts, no? So in practicality, if ito yung mangyayari, ang um, uh, yung rating ng ating bulb is 120 volts. Tapos, nilagay natin sa 240 volts. So, malabang sasabog doon ano yan, yung filament. No? But, for the sake of solving this one, no? kasi probably solving to, so, we'll try to neglect the effect no? na baka sumabog siya. And we'll try to find the wattage. Okay. So, mula dito sa rating niya, you can solve for the resistance because... AD devices constant yung resistance niya because the resistance depends on the material. Okay. So, to solve for the resistance, balik tayo kanina sa formula na ginamit natin, yung shortcut na formula. So, P is equals to E squared over R. Now, so, our R is equals to E squared over P. But for this one, ito yung kagamitin natin ng mga value. So, we have 100 squared divide. Balik tayo pala. 120, no? 
Okay, so 120 squared divide the power which is 100. So from that one, you can now solve for your resistance. No? So 120 squared divide 100. So that is your R is 100. Yeah. So 144 okay. yeah, 144 ohms. So at 240 volts naman tayo. So our power is equals to E squared over R. So we have 240 volts yung gagamitin natin. 240 volts squared over the R na ito. Kasi constant to across any voltage source. Yan. So we have 240 squared divide 144. Okay, so the correct answer is 400 watts. Now 400 watts is the power at 240 volts which is letter D. Okay? Next, we have uh, a battery can deliver 10 joules of energy to move 5 columns. So, ang hinanap is the potential difference or the voltage. Okay, solution. So, yung given natin, we have work which is 10 joule. Tapos, yung ating charge is 5 column. So, nahanap is the voltage. No? So, voltage is equal to your work over the charge. No? So, we have 10 joule divided by 2. Ah, pala, 5 pala, 5 column. So, 10 divided by 5, that is your E is equals to 2 volts, which is letter A. Okay. Next. The current in electric lamp is 5 ampere. What is the quantity of electricity flow towards the filament in 6 minutes? Okay, solution. So, yung given natin is yung current is 5 amperes. Tapos, yung time natin is 6 minutes. So, we need to convert it to 1 into seconds by multiplying 60. So, that is 360 seconds. No? So, formula. So, I is equals to Q over T. So, hinahanap is quantity of electricity so that is your charge so ito ilipat na natin yung time sa kabila so 
current times time is equal to the charge. So your current is 5 amperes. Your time is 360 seconds. Okay, so you can now have your charge in column. No? So 5 times 360. So that is equal to 1,8. No? So 1,800 columns, which is letter D. Okay? Next. So a bar magnet has a cross-sectional area of 1 by 2 centimeter. If the flux density of the magnet is 0.14 Tesla, so find the total flux. Okay, so solution. So, ang given natin, we have our flux density of 0 0.14 Tesla. So, this is equal also to 0 0.14 Weber per square meter. And our area, which is 1 by 2 centimeters. So, 1 times 2 centimeters. So, that is 2 square centimeter. So, Ang given natin is square uh, square meter para sa flux density. So, dapat ito, we convert this one into square meters. No? So, that is uh, 1 meter is to 100 centimeters. So, square lang natin yan. So, mangyayari, we have 2 centimeters squared divided by 100 squared. No? So, Okay, so we have 2 divided by 100 squared. So 2 divided by, divided by 100 squared. So that is equal to 2 times 10 to the power of negative 4 square meters. So flux density is equal to flux over area. So, ang hinahanap natin is flux. Okay? So, we have ito ilipat sa kabila. So, we have flux density times the area is equals to flux. So, that will be equal to 0 0.14 Weber per square meter times 2 times 10 to the power of negative 4 square meter. So, dito makakancel natin yung square meter. So, our answer will be in Weber. No? So, point 14 times 2 times 10 to the power of negative 4. So, we have 2.8 times 10 to the power of negative 5. Pero dito, naka-SI prefixes to. So, using your calculator, i-push lang yung ing na kipad, no? Ing, so that will become 28 times 10 to the power of negative 6. So 28 times 10 to the power of negative 6. This is now Weber. Ito siya, this is micro. So our answer will be 28 micro Weber. Yan. So letter C. Okay? Next. So, a constant current of 4 ampere charges a capacitor. So, how long will it take to accumulate a total charge of 8 columns on the plates?
a solution. So, given natin, current is equal to, ano ba yan? Okay, so current is equal to 4 amperes. Tapos, yung ating charge is 8 coulomb. Ang hinahanap is time. So, the formula is current is equal to charge over time. So, ipagpalit lang natin tong current at time. So, time will be equal to charge over current. So, we have the charge is 8 coulomb divide 4 ampere. So, 8 divide 4, that is 2 seconds. So, letter A yung tamang sagot. Okay? Next. So, a cloud of 2.5 times 10 to the power of 19 electron move past a point every 2 seconds. So, how much intensity how much is the intensity of electron flow? So, kapag intensity of electron flow, ang inahanap dyan is current. Okay, solution. So, given natin is the number of electrons, which is equal to 2.5 times 10 to the power of 19. Tapos, yung ating time is 2 seconds. So, yung inahanap is current, which is Q over T. No? So, kailangan natin yung charge. So, from this one, kukuha natin yung charge. No? Kasi yung uh, column, so that is equal to uh, the number of electrons. no So, dito yung number of electrons divide 2.65 times 10 raised to power of 19 electrons per column. Yan. So, meron na tayong electrons, which is 2.5 times 10 to the power of 19. So, divide 2.65 times 10 to the power of 19 electrons per column. So, our charge will be equal to 2.65. Okay. So, our charge will be equal to 2.5. So, 2.5 split to the power of 19 divided by 2.65 times 10 to the power of 19. Yan. Okay. So, this will be equal to 0.94. So, 0. 0.94 coulomb. No? So, this will be our charge pala. No? So, we have 0 0.94 divide 2. No? So, our I will be equal to 0.94. Well, get nag zoom. Divided by 2. So, this is equal to 0 0.4. No? 0 0.4 amperes. So, for this instance, if wala po sa choices yung answer, so you shade letter E. Yan. Okay. Next. So, a, a 2 cm long coil 10, uh, 10, has 10 turns and carries a current of 0 0.75 um, milliamperes. So, the magnetizing force of the coil is blank. Ang hinahanap po dito is yung uh, magnetic field intensity. Yan.
Okay, solution. So, our given na length is 2 cm. Tapos, yung number of turns is 10. Tapos, yung current is 750 milliamperes. So, this is equal to 750 times 10 raised to the power of negative 3 amperes. Ito, kasi ang ano, given or the choices is naka ampere turn so dapat ito gawin natin tong meters no ampere turn per meter kasi yung given so 2 divided by 100 so that is equal to 0 0.02 meters okay so h is equal to ni over l <clears throat> so we have 10 times 750 times 10 to the power of negative 3 over 0 0.02 okay so we have so 10 times 750 raised to the power of negative 3 divide 0 0.02 okay the answer is 375 so, 375 amper turn per meter. So, that is letter B. Okay? Next, a magnetic device has a core with a cross-section of 1 square inch. If the flux in the core is 1 milliweaver, the flux density is black. Okay, solution. So, yung given natin dito, the area is 1 square inch. Tapos, yung flux is 1 milli Weber. So, ang unit is Tesla. So, Tesla is Weber per square meter. So, dapat ito gawin natin Weber. So, 1 times 10 to the power of negative 3 Weber. Habang itong square inch, we convert that 1 into square meter. So, ang gawin natin is convert first into square centimeter. So, 2.54 centimeter is to 1 inch square. Tapos, ang 1 meter is equivalent to 100 centimeter square. No? So, we are left with square meter. So, 1 times 2.54 square divided by 100 squared. Yan. So, we have 1 times 2.54 squared divide 100 squared. So, that is equal to 6.45 no? times 10 to the power of negative 4. So, 6.45 times 10 to the power of negative 4 square meter. So, our flux density is equal to flux over the area. So, flux is 1 times 10 to the power of negative 3 weaver. Habang yung ating area is 6.45 times 10 to the power of 4 square meter. Okay. So, we have 1 times 10 to the power of negative 3 divided by 6.45 times... 10 raised to the power of negative 4. Okay. So we have 1.55 T, Tesla. No? So we have 1.55 Tesla. So the correct answer is letter C. Okay? Yeah.
Ayan. Okay. Okay. Ayan. So, that will be all for our discussion this evening. No? So, medyo madami-dami tayo na-solve na problem. So, I hope na you understand something on this session. Then, I will be also giving no, another practice test for this one. No? Maybe later this week. No, for you to be able to practice also solving problems involving the concepts and topics of basic electricity and Ohm's law. No, ang pinaka ano talaga common sa RME exam is Ohm's law. No, yung iba na topic is yun na yung mga tawag na yung mga questions na para sa mga top notchers. No, okay. So that will be all for this evening. No, thank you for your active participation. On our discussion okay so have a pleasant night ahead and good night okay so you can now leave our um, google meet session